Director, welcome to the Accelerator Community Pre-Application Workshop for 2018. Uh, today we'll be going through the Main Street Program, which is our most comprehensive program in the uh, state of New Mexico. So I want to walk through a little bit about Main Street itself in terms of what it looks like and where it came from. We are accredited and licensed by the National Trust for Historic Preservation's subsidiary program called the National Main Street Center. Uh, years ago, the Historic Trust uh, saw more than just buildings begin to decline. They saw entire districts, commercial districts with major historic and cultural assets in them uh, deteriorating and being torn down for a variety of reasons. The changes in economic patterns and living patterns after World War II uh, resulted in suburbanization, rural flight, marketplace changes, a movement away from downtown commerce into malls, global economy, more currently internet sales, have really changed the ways in which our downtowns and our traditional commercial areas work. There have been changes in local and federal policy that affect how historic buildings were managed and maintained. Main Street is a movement to preserve historic assets and rebuilding our vital economies in our downtown communities. They often act as a economic engine uh, for the community. So what is Main Street? Uh, it's, to quote the National Main Street Center, real places doing real work to revitalize their economies and preserve their character. It's about people. The National Main Street movement, uh, there are a number of elements to it, and I'm going to work over, kind of give you an overview today of what it looks like, and uh, then we'll talk a little bit about the application process. It's a proven set of strategies for revitalization and what we call economic transformation strategies or transformation strategies that impact positively the economic environment. And we call them shorthand ETS. We do a lot of alphabet soup. It's a powerful network of linked communities, more than 1,800 pro programs in 45 states around the country. So what are the benefits of Main Street? For businesses and entrepreneurs, it's a healthy business climate, an expanded customer base, vibrant commercial districts, growth opportunities for existing businesses, and places where local entrepreneurs can find a place to open up a business and uh, be successful in building uh, that local business out into a really highly profitable business. For property owners, it's stronger property values, stable rental environment, improved marketability, and increased occupancy rates so you don't have high turnover. Uh, you have sustainable long-term people working in your buildings. In partnership, it's leveraging scarce resources, and we all know today how tough it is to pull together dollars to accomplish different kinds of goals that we set in our communities. It strengthens local capacity and it creates stronger networks for economic development work. For the community, it's increased gross receipts taxes, stronger tax base, improved quality of life, restoration of civic and gathering places, and local job opportunities. We provide technical assistance in all these areas. So what does it mean to be a Main Street community? So if you are designated, and this is the accelerator process that moves you towards designation, uh, um, it means that you've been officially designated in a licensed accredited program within the state coordinating program, which is here. This is the New Mexico Main Street program, and that then is certified at the national level. You establish an economic market vision statement that is the foundation for transforming your district economy. You're implementing the Main Street four-point approach, and I'll talk about the four points in just a minute. And you meet the 10, the 10 national standards for accreditation annually, which is something that is developed by the National Main Street Center, and I'll re review those with you at the very end of the uh, presentation. So this is what an economic transformation strategy looks like with the four-point approach. The arrow moving from left to right is the transformation strategy in each community based on its its own assets its resources identifies what those economic strategies goals are 
And then they use the four point approach, economic vitality, design, promotion, organization to meet that transformation strategy. Those transformation strategies are long term, usually three to five years. And you're using those, those four points to comprehensively meet your economic objectives. And then finally, we go to quality outcomes and quality um, uh, quantitative outcomes, performance measures. And both National Main Street Center has a list of 16 that they want to annually reported, and because the legislature funds this program, our funding comes from the state of New Mexico's legislature, uh, they want to see performance measures in a number of areas, key areas. So here is the state's economic transformation strategies, and we've spent quite a bit of time thinking about what we want to do as a state program to assist all of our uh, Main Street programs and the other programs that we operate. We have three other programs the Arts and Cultural District Program, which we have a webinar coming up a little later this afternoon at 1.30. We have uh, the Frontier Communities Initiative, which we did a webinar for pre-application earlier today. And we have the Historic Theaters Initiative. And these are our, our arch, overarching economic goals within the uh, New Mexico Main Street Program. It's building capacity, enhancing entrepreneurial and creative economy work, and creating thriving places through placemaking and preservation. Here's what the Main Street four-point approach looks like. And this has been around since the inception of Main Street more than 40 years ago. So it's organization, design, promotions, and economic vitality. And they have to work together. They synergize a district. So in the organization, we're restoring political value, broad-based support, boards, committees, staff, volunteers. There are a number of elements and components to it. And it's a formalized organization that takes this on, usually a 501c3. In restoring physical value, and that's our design element. And we have both landscape architecture and architects on board working with us, and preservationists who work to identify critical buildings and assets that anchor your commercial district or commercial uh, area that you want to do restoration, revitalization, and redevelopment work in. In promotions, we're looking to bring people back, back into the commercial center, bring them to the destinational buildings that have been renovated and rebuilt and repurposed. Um, it's bringing people back into the community. And whether you're targeting your existing residential base or you're looking at tourism development, uh, this strategy works towards marketing to the targeted audiences that you, you wish to reach. And the most important one is economic vitality. It's restoring economic value to the district. Most of our districts and most of our traditional and historic commercial uh, buildings have been abandoned or underutilized for years. So it's bringing them back for the community to create job opportunity, a market-driven business, being able to generate new resources for the community uh, to be able to create that economic health. So here's the design point, and it's design in terms of what we want to accomplish with design. It's not just tearing down and building up. It's not generic franchise buildings that we're looking for businesses. We really want the, the street, the buildings, all elements of the area that we're revitalizing or redeveloping, speaking the language of architecture and design that are, is original to the building. Each building speaks to itself. There's no one building better than another. In design and architecture, there's a variety of different periods. And we really look towards restoring those buildings from the period they're from. And integrating that with other uh, buildings that may be infill buildings that are more contemporary. And often our commercial districts have multiple different generations of architectural uh, development. Paint, paint's a big, big piece of Main Street. Main Street is a volunteer driven program and it's a lot about self-help. It's really about what you can do our program brings you additional resources, the professional resources that may not be available to you in your community. So changing paint's a big issue for us. This is a, uh, the picture here is one of the projects in its conceptual design stage in Roswell. Later on, we went in and actually did with facade squads, with volunteers, stucco and paint to restore the facades of the buildings. And people say, well, that's just pretty fine. Well, actually, most of the buildings that we work on are vacant or underutilized. They're being used for storage. Um, they usually turn hands. Either the building sells itself, or we find that a business moves in 
to a vacant building or a business of higher use, one that generates more resources for the community. So facade development and just paint can mean a lot to a building in terms of bringing it back to proper use. Historic preservation ethic. Uh, we're not strict preservationists, but preservation is an important element of the work we do. On the left-hand picture, you see them taking off uh, what we call slip covers, stuff put on in the 60s, metal kind of fabricated material. In the middle picture, you see a wood-clad painted building that on the right side, you see now fully restored. Uh, the, the different periods, people have tried try different things to kind of modernize their buildings. And often in that modernization, they've actually damaged the look of the street, the look of the building, and restoring them back to a healthy, um, architecturally correct uh, building often makes that building much more economically viable. So financial incentives for design improvements. We spend a lot of time cultivating a variety of different uh, finance we're not a grant program. Uh, we are a technical assistance program, a comprehensive program driven around revitalization goals. But it's important to bring resources in. So we have cultivated a number of both federal, state, and foundation partners who do come in and provide seed grants or funding that help assist. And they're usually partnership programs, so they're usually a 50-50 match. But they're important to getting the work done. Uh, the other area that we have some funding in is capital outlay from time to time. The legislature appropriates, and that helps us bring dollars to the table for your construction-ready projects to move them forward. And it's usually a good leverage match since most federal and foundation foundations now require a 50-50 match. So one of the big things that we do is a Main Street Facade Squad. And it's more than just the building down on the right. It's really taking a whole group of volunteers and working. So now you get to see the uh, Roswell Facade Squad that's from the early inception of the buildings uh, underutilized to the later development of those buildings. Placemaking is a big part of our landscape architecture design side. It's taking underutilized spaces and creating viability with them. Often they are the teeth missing in the full mouth. Uh, they're gaps. Buildings have been torn down. They've burned down and not been replaced and repurposing those spaces so that they're gathering spaces, places for events, places for music, places for art. And in urban design, it's about planning. So we take a look at how do we redesign areas that need to function better in terms of uh, pedestrian and car and truck traffic. And we really want to keep pedestrian as the lead element in all our redevelopment work. We have a uh, an agreement with MDOT, New Mexico Department of Transportation, to work on, since many of your communities have a state highway moving through them, how to slow traffic down, how to make it a pedestrian-friendly environment. So not only the commerce moving by in the trucks is taken care of, but the commerce that needs to happen in your business district also uh, is taken care of. Under urban design, we do a lot of downtown master planning. Planning leads to conceptual work, leads to community consensus leads to uh, final construction drawings, that leads to construction. So planning is a critical element for us. Uh, in most communities, we're able to do a master plan. In many of them, we're able to do something called a metropolitan redevelopment area. That's a special redevelopment project area that uh, is very similar to a master plan when it comes with a series of redevelopment tools that is critical for working in economic development projects since the state of Mexico has an anti-donation clause that makes it very tough for the public and private to work together. So economic vitality. Uh, there's a lot of components to this. We have a person who works uh, with your local organizations to take a look at what areas of economic development and particularly business and property development you want to work on. And it's a lot of different areas whether you're retaining and strengthening uh, your existing business mix, whether you want to recruit new businesses in, whether you want to support new local entrepreneur development from your local entrepreneurs, uh, building incentives, business incentives, programs, financial development. Uh, these are all some of the components, and I'm just skimming over the top of things that happen within the economic business realm. So here's some additional economic vitality roles, economic analysts, strategic planners, 
performance monitors, business developers, enterprise facilitators, civic entrepreneurs. All these are different roles that economic vitality has, and at different times, your community may choose one of these areas to work in, and we would help build the capacity of that person if they don't have it already, to build their skill base, their knowledge base, to bring the resources in that you need. Economic market position statements. This is a big issue for us. We make investments through your master plan to identify what your current market is, and then take realistically looks at what your five-year market vision could be, what where you can evolve to in terms of being able to grow the economic viability of buildings of the business area. Inventories and business analyzation mixes. You know, we really need to take a look at what's out there. Uh, it's very hard to match up local entrepreneurs or new businesses or people want to do business expansions if you don't have a proper business inventory and what the business mix is. Often, um, there are certain businesses that you want multiple businesses of. Restaurants are one of those. The more restaurants you have, the more you develop additional interest for people coming into your area to actually eat and then stay in shop or in stroll or take advantage of the other services provided. Establishing that economic market vision statement is critical to us. It's that long-term role of building in who we're serving, who do we want to serve, who can, where, what are the best areas to enhance to grow the local economy? So establishing early goals is important, and our economic transformation strategies begin to talk to that, but it engages all stakeholders within the community, property owners, business owners, banks, real estate agents, local government, nonprofits. Everybody needs to come together working within your district to be able to build a strong economic profile of where you are today and where you want to be five years from now. Business development toolbox. Depending on what area you're working on within your community, you really want to take a look at what are the components that you need in your toolbox for your current needs and your current work plans. So there's a whole number of areas that you need to work in. Sometimes it's education and training. Sometimes you're focused on business retention. You've got a large vacancy rate and you don't want to continue losing more leakage to another community or a larger city 60 miles away. Frequently it's entrepreneur development. Uh, local entrepreneurs need opportunity, incentives, and it's really critical that both the public and private sectors work together to create that entrepreneurial environment where people feel welcomed into coming to experiment with ideas they have in business development. The final one is financing and incentives, really taking a look at all the kinds of things that you can offer to businesses and property owners to upgrade their, their properties and to get into business. And finally, promotion. Uh, the goals inside promotion are to promote and market the downtown district. Uh, I keep saying district. Some of our districts are quarters. Some of them are courthouse squares. Some are village plazas. Uh, New Mexico has some very unique ways in which our commercial activity takes place. And so we adapt our four-point approach and our strategic goals to the type of community that you are, that you've been, and that you're evolving into. So promoting it's our, your unique assets, and unique assets are really important across the board when we're looking at our Main Street programs. We really want to make sure that you're based within the appropriate areas of your culture, your physical built assets, your human capacity, uh, the resources you have to incrementally build out uh, the development that you want to get to. So every community is unique. While there's an overarching Main Street program that has generalized areas that we want to work in, each community kind of determines the area that it needs to grow in and how it needs to take care of its activity, its buildings, uh, the kinds of characteristics that are unique to the community, historic and cultural assets. We have some very contemporary cities that do not have very many historic buildings or they've been the victim of uh, redevelopment back in the 1960s where entire blocks were leveled uh, and the kinds of tourism assets you have. If you're looking at a tourism kind of product, you're going to have to have a whole series of tourism supports uh, to bring people in. And that's as simple as bathrooms, hotels, spaces, restaurants. It's not just strictly the retail areas that we often work in. Promotion components, there are three areas, and we have a great person working on this with us. 
it's image development, it's your image and branding. And I know branding has become an overused word, but that image development of how do you set yourself apart from other communities who are doing similar work, trying to attract business activities, trying to attract tourists, trying to attract visitors into their districts? How do you uniquely identify who you are based on your, your assets? Uh, retail and event activities, um, it's, for us, it's very important to be able to help sustain uh, those folks who are doing retail business. There are a lot of pushes against retail uh, that um, are highly competitive, whether it's Walmart or uh, Targets or dollar stores or Amazon. They all contribute to a much more competitive environment for retailers than we've seen in a long time. And then special events. What are the unique things that you want to celebrate that's appropriate to share outside the community? And what are those things appropriate to share inside the community that are part of your social fabric? So we work with you to think about what areas do we really want to develop for a broader audience? And what are those things that we need to celebrate ourselves to, to bring our community together, to learn more about our community, to educate the next generation of people living in our community? Retail and events activities, broke it down a little bit, so here's just some ideas in terms of the kinds of things that a lot of our communities are doing in New Mexico Main Street uh, currently. There's niche marketing, coupon packages during the holidays, art hops, walk and strolls, all kinds of things that engage people on the street as well as inside the businesses, cooperative advertising, sidewalk sales. All of them have different targeted markets and all of them have to be worked with a little differently. Retail events that encourage sales for businesses in the downtown district. Those are really critical. Many of the events that you do will not directly impact your local retailers. So you need to make sure that you're working with them in a way that engages them in other, in other events that help support their local business development. And special events, parades, festivals, concerts, rallies, street fairs, you name it, we've got it out there. After 35 years of work in New Mexico, New Mexico Main Street has a large archive and a large uh, body of work from all the community development work that's gone on over the years. Special events are really important. Uh, they're, they're kind of two different kinds of special events, destinational events that pull people from outside the community and signature events that actually pull from a much larger beyond just the regional area. Some of them are national events, things like the old Bernalillo Wine Festival, the UFO Festival in Roswell, uh, the, um, uh, let's see, the Clay Festival in Silver City. Uh, that has a national pull. So that's the difference between a signature and a destinational event, but you're bringing new people into the, into the area that you're revitalizing so that they re-experience. Many of our districts have deteriorated for so long. People only think about downtown or commercial or traditional area of, of business as a deteriorated area. When you're successful in that redevelopment process, you need to pull people back in. Finally, organization. It's to build and sustain a strong volunteer-driven Main Street organization. We depend on uh, boards and uh, committee structures and sometimes team uh, groups of people. And it's critical that you have enough people in a board organized as a 501c3 uh, to be able to drive your projects and activity. We actually do a partnership with New Mexico Main Street with you and your local government body. And we have county programs, we have multiple city programs, we have individual city programs, we have municipal, municipal programs, we have uh, the only Native American program in the country right now at Zuni Pueblo. But all of this takes public-private partnership and it's key and critical for for the redevelopment of the area because both entities, both the public and private side, need to be able to um, work collaboratively to bring the different resources that they have to the table to do the revitalization work. Uh, you need a tax-exempt entity, and it's really a 501c3 to be able to bring. Uh, we have a number of our funders that are charitable, uh, and they only give to 501c3s. The four-point coordination across projects, activities, and partners, and I briefly introduced the the concept of the four-point approach at the beginning. Uh, financial and human resources, you need staff, you need volunteers, you need fundraising. All those things are critical components for developing a healthy organization operationally. Planning, we do a lot of work around planning, annual work plans, we provide a lot of support to make sure that you're lining up projects that are appropriate 
and that you can actually accomplish something. And the big thing for us is not just the thinking and um, the policy development and the conceptual work, it's also about actually implementation. So coming up with outcomes and performance measures and making sure you're moving your economic development work forward. Public relations is a key part of the organizational side in terms of marketing your overall organization. These aren't the marketing of, of retail and event activity. It's really about marketing your program and making sure you're building that partnership out to attract new resources and monitoring evaluation. That's performance and outcomes. So a public-private partnership kind of looks like this. You have your stakeholder group, local government, state government, and the Main Street C3 Corporation. Now, a lot of folks think, well, okay, we've got our stakeholders inside our Main Street organization. Your stakeholders are your community. They're your business people. They're your property owners. Many of them will not be sitting on your Main Street Incorporated board. So it's very important that you stay connected to your community. Uh, whether you're doing a tourism development project with Main Street or you're doing a more residential-based service program uh, to business services to your community, uh, it's really critical that you stay engaged with your community development work. So engaging the Main Street four-point approach. This is what a traditional uh, program looks like in terms of organization. We have a variety of hybrids out there, and we're happy to work with you on that. But traditionally, we have a 501c3 Main Street organization. You have hired staff to be an accredited program in the National Main Street Center. You need to have a minimum 40 hours per week paid staff person. Uh, there's a second level called affiliate, and that's our state certified level. That's the general level, and that has to have at least 30 hours per week paid. And you, we usually find our executive directors get paid a whole lot. Uh, work a whole lot more hours than they're paid for, for. but uh, those are the critical elements in terms of being able to uh, bring together a functional operational board in terms of the actual driving it. So you have your revitalization organization, you have your Main Street staff. Under that are the four points and, and different areas of teams or uh, committees, and we, we can work with either structure. Uh, teams tend to be more temporary, they are focused on projects, Committees uh, usually are there for the long haul meeting on a monthly basis. We're finding people don't have the time to do as much committee work. Some communities prefer a committee structure. Other communities prefer working team work, getting a project done, then moving and constructing another team to get another project done. Ultimately, though, all four points have got to be engaged in your projects. So what does operational funding look like? This is a traditional... Um, uh, scan of what uh, where the composition of the funding comes from to operate your, your work uh, of your operations of your 501c3 Main Street organization 30% uh, public funding and this is just for operational I'm not talking about projects 30% funding from your business district the 30% community funding and 10% miscellaneous so business district funding People do a lot of fundraising activities within the business district itself. Community funding is the larger partners who come in and work with you in helping to regenerate a traditional or commercial business area. Supports. This is the accelerator program process. An accelerator is um, a 12 to 18 month period where we invest capacity capacity building organizational development resources into awarded communities for this process. It's hopefully leading to becoming a designated Main Street program. Uh, not all communities make it through the accelerator process for a variety of reasons, but we need to get you there before we can make you fully Main Street. You've got to be a fully operational organization. So some of, your, some of you may have in place uh, a an economic development organization or a community development corporation that you may be able to house um, a Main Street program in, as long as it's a C3. Uh, some of you may be all new to this and would require help from creating bylaws, organizing the steering committee, move, moving into a board structure, <clears throat> registering um, with the Attorney General's office. All, there's a whole set of stages of development 
of a formal organization. And by the end of the accelerator process, we want to make sure that you are formally organized, that we can bring you in to the Main Street program as a fully functioning organization. So that includes articles, bylaws, uh, applications to the IRS for your 501c3 if you don't have one, uh, all kinds of applications. There's a lot of governmental regulation that has to be met in compliance to get you to that end of that 12 to 18, 18 month period. Sometimes we've taken as much as two years. Uh, but being able to work with you, we're not going to force you to kind of do all this on your own. We actually have some pretty good experts who are happy to work with you depending on where you are today and where you need to get to complete the accelerator process and come in to the full Main Street program. So I mentioned before the 10 performance of standards. This is how accreditation comes from national. You can become, as I said earlier, you can become an affiliate program, which is kind of our state certified level of program operations. Um, but to become national, you need to be working on your economic development work. You need to be identifying performance uh, uh, outcomes uh, each year, and that you're successfully implementing redevelopment revitalization. To become a nationally accredited program, and this is the standards the National Main Street Center has, it's demonstrated broad-based support from the community, and that's every year we go back and redo uh, these 10 standards. Vision and mission statements that are current, that clearly identify where you're headed over the next five years in your economic development work. An updated comprehensive Main Street work plan, and we have people work with you on that if you need that assistance. Uh, we want to make sure that you're identifying key critical projects that you're investing in and that you're getting good outcome and that you're getting the long-term Main Street performance uh, that reaches that Main Street vision at that end of the five years. But annually, you need to incrementally work with that. A group of uh, active board and volunteers. Uh, it's cr critical that you have people willing to serve on a board and people are help willing to drive the four-point approach and become kind of specialists in those areas. We do an awful lot of training for those folks who want it and need it, skill building, knowledge building. Uh, there's marketplaces constantly changing all the time, so we're constantly training ourselves to be able to bring the latest cutting edge strategies to the table, as well as basic strategies that you need to move through. Maintaining a historic preservation ethic. Uh, wherever we can, we want to save our historic buildings and do adaptive reuse work with them. We want to ensure that if a building is salvageable, that we keep that building. It's very easy to tear a building down. It's very hard to replace a building once it's gone. And we've had that experience over and over again in many of our communities. People think it's oh, just simple. We'll get it down, get rid of it, and get something new in. And usually the functionality of the building, much, much less the contribution to the district itself is usually much less than what the original building was. So uh, it's an important component of maintaining your cultural resources and your historic resources. And we actually have a, a person on board who helps us with preservation uh, work in terms of building nominations, building credits. There's tax credits around the building renovation, a variety of things that are out there for our property owners to be able to access. An adequate operating budget, and we do have standards on what that budget should look like, and that is in the uh, background narrative that is up on our website. That is a companion piece to the application, and I'll tell you how to get there in a minute. Uh, for a the 10 performance standards, now this again is for national accreditation, 40 hours a week minimum for that executive director. You need a staff person or staff people to be able to drive your projects. You're all volunteers if you're a board. You've got a lot of critical things that you need to accomplish in terms of policy and operations and fiscal responsibilities, but you also have responsibilities for moving events and projects and activities forward. Main Street is a working board. It's not a policy board. And your staff person we train up and bring a lot of skills and knowledge to is a person who helps support the work that you want to accomplish in your community. So it becomes very critical that you have that paid person in there to help bring the resources you need to accomplish the projects and activities that you've identified. You should have ongoing training for your staff and your volunteers. And that's something that we can either assist you with. We provide a lot of training experiences. Sometimes those are tailored indirectly into your community and are critical for moving your work forward. Reporting key statistics. 
As I said at the beginning of this, National Main Street Center has been collecting statistical data on performance for its entire 40 years. We've been doing the same thing, thing for our 35 years. We have deep databases that really identify the kinds of accomplishments such as job creation, building rehabilitations, new business development, business expansions, private sector reinvestment. And we teach you how to collect that data. It's important for your ability to raise funds, to be able to talk to the local government entity that is helping to provide funding resources for your operations, to talk to state legislators, to foundations, to federal agencies. They want to hear what your performance level is before they give you additional funding. So those become very critical. We also report quarterly to the Legislative Finance Committee, uh, the highest level committee in the state government. And they have us reporting in private sector reinvestment and the number of buildings we rehabilitate. Those are two, two key critical areas. At this point, Main Street is operating at $43 of private sector reinvestment for every $1 that the state invests into your, your local uh, programs and your local government. Uh, so that's an important statistic because the average is usually about one to seven. So we're a highly successful, high powered program. And then maintaining a current membership with the National Main Street Center. If you become an affiliated or accredited program, we believe that you belong in the national network. So we cover the cost of that and we'll pay for uh, your re annual registration fee, which is I think around $400 now. Uh, but it also opens up a whole door of resources from the National Main Street Center located in Chicago. Uh, they have a whole variety of programs, activities, trainings, uh, resource databases that you can access if you become a member of the program. So we think it's an important element of, of uh, becoming part of the New Mexico Main Street Network as well. So that's basically it. Um, I wanted to do a quick overview. Your application um, is basically a self-assessment. It's a way in which you take uh, and look at uh, what you see as your assets. If you're selected as a semifinalist, we will come in and do our own asset survey to see what we see and that you're not taking certain things for granted. Um, and want to make sure that you're identifying all the opportunity sites within a proposed area that you're working on. Uh, the application is due January 31st here to this office. You need to either hand deliver it or make sure you set it certified. Uh, FedEx is preferential. Uh, we have a couple different ways, mailing addresses for that, but that's a little ways out yet. Uh, we want to make sure it gets here. If it's not here on time, 2 o'clock on January 31st, uh, you will not be considered for um, uh, the review process. Uh, so you do need to make sure you make that date. We can't take responsibility for Postal Service not to delivering things. Just to give you you an idea where a complex, if you've not been to where we're located in Santa Fe, there are a complex of five major buildings with probably about 30 different agencies and divisions in them. And if the package is not properly identified in terms of its mailing and posting, it can get lost anywhere and disappear for weeks. So we've identified those areas that you need uh, to address uh, the, the, any kind of application submittals. Uh, we have given you the option of creating a fillable form. Uh, if you uh, want to uh, just do it on a typewriter or on your computer and add pages to it, we ask that you do it in the order uh, that the application asks for the questions so that we can look at it. There's a review committee. They'll be reviewing it. There'll be multiple um, applications. And most of our folks take this work home at night. So they already have plenty of day work to do. And if it's not assembled in the right way, it's very hard to navigate between the different competing applications. This is a competitive application process. Uh, it is limited based on, on the funding that we have. Um, we have room to add at least one new community this year, possibly more. We're also doing applications for two other programs. And it'll depend on what we see as the best applications uh, and the community is most ready to move their work forward. Um, and I think that's about it. Oh, on the bottom of this last slide, www.nmhstreet.org, that is our website. You will find on the home page on the right-hand side uh, access to 
the applications and narratives and this this actual webinar will be put on YouTube and be available to you so you have access to the physical um, PowerPoint presentation as well as to my voice presentation. So with that, I'll open it to any questions that you might have. <clears throat> and there should be, for those listening, a raise your hand icon or you're also welcome to type your questions into the question box. I'll give you a few moments if you want to type things in. Um, ah, there we go. Can you hear us, Filipino? I can hear you, ma'am. All right, go ahead with your question, please. Well, first of all, just want to let you know we're sorry that we could not attend the uh, the Main Street uh, event a couple of weeks ago, but we had a board meeting, so we could not attend, and we both Robert and I felt very bad about that. So I have a question for you guys. Um, so when you looked at the Under the Frontier, uh, there was something about a facade program. And then under the Main Street, there also is a facade program. So if we, uh, if we decide to, uh, to go back for another year into the um, Frontier, uh, a Frontier program, would we be able to work with you guys on a facade program? Uh, yeah, you could, but you wouldn't be eligible for the larger set of resources that Main Street has. You'd be focused only on the facade work. That would be it. So are we talking about, in that case, we'd be able to have the technical support, or you can only get the technical support if, in your, if you're in the Main Street? Okay. Um, the technical support exists in both, but the facade program is one of a comprehensive set of programs. And for the accelerator program, uh, it's mostly focused on organizational development. If you're well developed at this point, we'd probably choose a couple of small projects uh, that are very visible and very doable by your volunteers um, and your board. So with the uh, accelerator program, uh, what is important to show is that organizationally, you may have the pieces together. Uh, is that correct? Yes, and, and I think there's a list in this PowerPoint of the areas that are the organizational areas that we would work with you on to make sure you're up to speed. Most of our communities take about 12 months to get through this. We've had some take longer. But there is a cutoff period. We can't do an accelerator process forever. We need to either bring you into the Main Street program or uh, fish, and, fish or cut bait, I guess, is as they say it. That makes sense. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Uh, and I'd also like to reiterate, I think uh, Rich did in his presentation as well, that of course, in New Mexico Main Street, you can contact us at any point with further questions as you're preparing your application materials. So if you think of something, you know, as you're driving home from this or... That's correct. We, um, uh, we deliberately made it two months. It's a little more than two months so that you had time to process it in your community and think about kinds of questions that come up. We're happy to provide um, technical assistance to address questions and work through any issues that you might have. Uh, depending on whether you're a nonprofit or an unorganized group of people or a local uh, government body looking at this particular program. Um, but we're happy to walk that through with you and you're welcome to email, phone call, uh, any way that we can connect with you. If it's a larger issue, uh, sometimes we can get out and actually visit the community, but uh, it's, a, it's a tight one in terms of actual getting into communities, but we'll try. So. Right. And with that, I don't think there are additional questions. Nothing else? No. You're all good? Well, thank you for participating today. If something comes up, please do call. Uh, we're happy to work with you. We want you to be successful whether you get into the program or not. We certainly hope that you will move your own work forward for your community. Um, we do have our next quarterly coming up, and I would encourage any you who are thinking of applying and have never been to a Main Street 
what we call quarterly. It's a, a two-day program of knowledge building. That is, uh, it starts the afternoon of January 31st, and it ends the afternoon, the morning, the end of the morning on uh, the 2nd of, of uh, February. And that is held at, at La Fonda Hotel here in Santa Fe. Uh, our other quarterlies are moved around around the state and they are networking training sessions for all of our executive directors and our boards and we try to do a variety of things to bring people together because often the expertise uh, is best housed within your local programs as you develop your skills and your experiences we're we are, are your professional support system when you need some kind of professional support that there's a gap within your community or within your organization that you don't have access to particular kinds of resources. Hopefully we're, we're that go-to group of professionals that can come in and work with you. Well, with that, thank you very much. As things come up, give us a call. My phone number is on the, uh, on the end of the PowerPoint and our uh, website and do be in touch.